How's it going, folks? This is Liam Shai. Welcome to another episode here of uh, Tips and Tricks at Paramind. So today I'm gonna talk to you guys about live arranging. And this is a technique that I think is pretty fun because it sort of combines what we do on stage with what we do in the studio. Uh, so this winds up being very, very good practice for getting like a stage or a live performance show together. Uh, and what it also does is it creates a nice way to have a more hands-on experience when you're actually recording into Arrangement View uh, in Ableton Live. So kind of the concept here that I want to try to kind of break, I guess you could say, a little bit is the the fact that so many folks are very heavily reliant on copy-paste type of culture, right? So uh, when you make a track, you start out, you make your, your parts, and you start copying and pasting and copying and pasting, and you sort of, you know, additively sort of start to put together an arrangement that way. And while that might be kind of useful, um, as a or feel of an intuitive I guess I should say um, and it is useful I mean there's no right or wrong here right it's just different techniques uh, I want to kind of give you a new perspective and a new way to think about arranging um, that ties into my 4x4 workflow and we don't really have a lot of time to get into my 4x4 workflow uh, that's like a whole other topic uh, but the basic premise is that um, when I like to write tracks, I, I like to create what are called pretotypes, and I do basically these sketches of a track. And four by four is just drums, harmony, bass, melody, and then the other four is chorus, verse, breakdown, and bridge. So that's the four and the four. And my my thought process here is well, if you have those you know, four sections and four parts, uh, that's everything that you need to really develop proof of concept for an idea. You know, and so the idea here is that you make like 10, 20, 30, 40 of these pretotypes in this 4x4 workflow configuration, and then you pick the best one or two or three, uh, you know, the cream of the crop, and then you actually turn those into a, a full arrangement and, and then, you know, a full song with mixing and mastering and the whole thing. So what we're gonna look at today is one example of a pretotype. We actually did this with my students live here in class um, in, in our ground campus classroom environment. Um, so we came up with this class, uh, with this project together, it was sort of like a tropical moon batone thing. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, so we're gonna use that today as the example. And as you can see on screen, uh, we've got the drum section, which is just a group. We've got the harmony section, uh, the bass section, and the melody section. Uh, and that's the four by four. Now, you'll also notice there's a new section here, uh, a, a track, track five, called Macrobat. And the Macrobat track, this is where things are gonna get a little um, advanced, if you will, for today. Uh, so Macrobats are a function of a MIDI remote script called CliffX, uh, which is a free download, actually, from uh, these guys' native control. And that's a native control, like native control. Just that spelling there. So uh, you can download uh, the CliffX script. Just do a simple uh, Google search, or we'll probably drop the link in there for you, actually, as well. Um, and you can download and install uh, the CliffX MIDI remote script. And without getting too much into that, because they, they have a whole PDF, that'll explain how you do that. Um, the basic premise here is that we have what are called macrobats. And macrobats are like super racks. So you're, most of you are familiar with, with racks and macros, right? And macros, so we have here, like for example, eight macros, and those can control multiple parameters within a rack. Well, that's very cool. But what if we were able to control multiple racks uh, at a single time? So as we can see here, like on my drum track, I've got a uh, audio effects rack, and then I've got another one on my harmony track, I've got another one on my bass track. Uh, basically on all my tracks, I have a, uh, except for the melody actually, because uh, I didn't really need one there, but the point is, uh, all of these racks, right, across my drums and my harmony and my bass, they're all controlled by a single master rack, which is called the NK receiver. And you can see how these are identified. This one says, um, and if we kind of, Zoom in on this, there's a parentheses, an asterisk, a parentheses, uh, sorry, a number, uh, and then a per, uh, an asterisk and a parentheses again. So that's how we sort of identify uh, where that links. So as we can see, this NK receiver one, which if I move this here, you'll also see the APC40 lights up here. Uh, that's because this is actually hard mapped using uh, MIDI map mode to that knob. Uh, but you'll see what's great about this is we're even though we're moving this this rack here on the Macrobat channel, it's actually moving this live effects rack 
here on the drums. So they are linked. So basically uh, this, this fade one is linked to this macro fade one and that's uh, so on and so forth. So these four uh, macros here uh, correlate to these four macros here. Then on the harmony, we have uh, two macros, a, a reverb and a, and a grain delay. Those are linked here to the master. And then we have on the bass channel, uh, a couple of more uh, effects. And these were just some filter effects. These are just some performance effects um, that I grabbed from the uh, Ableton effect rack performance menu. So uh, that may be a lot of like new information that you've never heard before and it might sound a little weird or like, huh? But uh, once we actually just start to play with it, I think it'll, it'll start to come together and make sense. Um, now the reason why this is so dope and this is so powerful is because what it allows us to do is when we get into live arranging, uh, you have to think we have some very serious physical limitations. Uh, those physical limitations being like, we only have two hands, right? And uh, you know, maybe you can like get your mouth into it or something, or maybe, you know, if you're like a DMC champion, right, you can get your elbows in there. Uh, but for us mere mortals, right, we just have two hands. And so we have to kind of do a lot with our two hands. And so one of the ways that we can kind of uh, get around this now is by using this master macro. So we can now control all the channels, uh, or sorry, all the macros on across different channels, uh, which is really, really cool. So for example, like I can just have, um, if I just have my, uh, track five um, selected, uh, you know, that will then automatically give me my uh, soft map right here in the device control, uh, which will link to those channels, um, which is great. So you can kind of just, you know, keep your channel selector on channel five rather than having to, oh, I want to use the drums, then I'm going to have to, you know, jump to the drums or now I want to go to the bass now or the harmony now I have to jump to the harmony channel, right? You can just leave your uh, track selection on that track five or even better, like I kind of uh, alluded to earlier, um, you can just hard map those as well. So I've hard mapped them uh, to my user knobs at the top, uh, as you can see. So now those are automatically linked, basically no matter what track is selected. So that's really, really nice. Um, now you're probably asking yourself, well, you know, Liam, you could have just, you could have just, you know, hard mapped these anyway. And that is, that is actually true. I could have hard mapped them. Um, but I really think that the advantage here is this soft mapping and also the ability to have multiple uh, sends going to the same master. So it really does open up a whole new uh, possibility in terms of mapping and macro control uh, that doesn't exist natively within Ableton Live. Um, so again, this is a, a MIDI remote script, which um, if you don't know, those are written in Python. So this is not like Max MSP. This is actually the Python language um, that's running under the hood, um, basically allowing us to do this advanced routing uh, sort of behind the scenes with Ableton Live. Um, and again, that is through native control, nativecontrol.com, uh, and it is completely free. So that's awesome. So big shout out to those guys for developing the CliffX plugin. Um, they have a bunch of other fantastic MIDI remote scripts. So yeah, big, big shout out to them. They're, they're really, really dope. So without further ado, I kind of want to really now, now that I've kind of explained everything, like what is it here, you know, what, what what's going on with the Ableton session, now I think we have a really good premise to understand now when I actually go and do a demonstration of live arranging so that you can really fully understand exactly what's going on. So besides that stuff, there's really nothing else tricky. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so I'll just give you a very quick demo. So like uh, right here, I have my drum tracks. Right, so this is four variations, right? I have a chorus level, uh, so high energy level drums. I have a verse level, um, so more middle of the road energy drums. I've got a breakdown level drums, and then I've got uh, a bridge section. And, and a bridge section is really just kind of like, oh, and now for something completely different, uh, the old Monty Python uh, adage. So what I typically like to do for a bridge section, uh, for example, if like in this track, it's kind of like got this kind of, uh, you know, salsa, Latin beat, kind of a break, type of a beat and then for the uh, for the bridge section we do a four on the floor type of a beat right you know so more more kind of traditional house beat so that's kind of how we differentiate that and then uh, the same goes for the rest of the track so we've got like for example uh, harmony so chorus level verse breakdown 
right? So four different levels. So uh, I think you get the idea. So that's basically what's going on. That's it, just four, four, uh, four groups of clips in four sections. Uh, and that is gonna give us basically the fodder that we need to come up with a, a song arrangement. So yeah, so I think I've talked enough. Um, so without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump in and kind of see how this plays out. So I'm just gonna stop recording here, or stop playback here, uh, reset the playhead uh, all the way back to the beginning. Uh, and at that point now, I can just hit record enable on my APC-40. By the way, uh, quick note, this is by no means exclusive to the APC-40. If you have any MIDI controller uh, with eight knobs and some clip launch, you can do that. So whether that's the push, um, whether that's you know a pair of uh, Novation launch pads and the Novation launch controls, uh, you know, a livid controller, any any controller will do. I'm just using the APC-40 today. Uh, one of the things I like is that it has faders, so, and I like to kind of pull things in and out with the faders, so. Um, okay, so that's it. So let's go ahead and uh, let's do this. So we got record enable, uh, very good. Always wanna make sure we do uh, stop all clips. Okay, cool. I'm going to go ahead and toggle the follow so that it will follow the progress as we record throughout the track. And I wanna just go ahead and make sure all my effects are down. Yes, very good. Without further ado, let's party. Let's bring in the melody. Bass line up. Harmony. from another section from the bridge. Start to build the tension. So there it is. So now we've recorded our arrangement, which was initially uh, sort of this loose uh, collection of uh, sections in the session view and recorded that into the arrangement view now for further editing and refinement. Um, so obviously this is not the perfect final, you know, arrangement of how it's gonna be, but we've really given ourselves a foundation from which we can now build the song. Um, and we've done it in a way that's very organic, right? Because 
I'm here, I'm live, I'm feeling the music as it comes in, as it goes out. Um, I, I have this very, you know, direct connection, you know, through the APC-40 uh, into, you know, the timing and the energy and do I feel like things want to go up or come back or take a break, right? So I'm getting away from this copy-paste world of like, well, let me just sort of, you know, move with my mouse and sort of imagine with my mind what I think will feel right. I'm actually feeling it with my body, right, in connection with the, the hardware and then with the software. Um, so I think this is just such a, such a fantastic way to work and it opens up just a whole new world of musicality uh, when it comes to something like arranging, which I think typically people don't think is a very musical um, part of the songwriting process, but in fact it, it can be a very musical part of the songwriting process. And in addition, you know, if you get really good at this, it, it, it really sets you up to do live performance very, very well, you know, because uh, at this point, you know, this could be a song that I take on the stage and perform live for folks. So, um, and each time you do it, it can be a little bit different, which is, which is exciting too, right? All the pieces are there, all the pieces are the same, uh, but it allows you to perform it in new ways each time. So, um, so I just think this is really fun. I thought you guys would enjoy it and appreciate it. I, I hope that it inspires you. Um, I'll go ahead and make this uh, Ableton set available for you um, so that if anybody wants to download it, play with it, check it out, practice on their own, uh, and certainly see how all of the macro bats are set up. Um, yeah, all that stuff can be there available to you. So thank you so much for watching. This is Liam at Paramind. See you on the other side. If you're a music producer, subscribe to our channel and stay up to date on the latest PureMind tutorial videos, track breakdowns, elite sessions, and more. Visit us at PureMind.com.